Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is currently Monday, January 10th, 2011. BAM! It's day nine, daily number 237. Oh, it's an earthquake of awesome happening in here today. That's right, I reinserted my chair beneath me because I need to have perfect upright posture for the awesomeness that is today's Fun Day Monday. So, for any of you who didn't know, this was the theme for this week. You need to play a Zerg and only attack with Nidus Worms. You cannot walk your army from your base to his base. You must only Nidus Worm your way in. Um, and, oh, at one additional uh, restriction. You must be building two Nidus Worms at the same time, at least once during the game. So a lot of times I tend to do, like, a more, you know, goofy Fun Day Monday. You know, for instance, like the Team Mata Battles, where everyone must choose one unit in a 3v3 or 4v4 and only build that unit. A lot of sort of crazy stuff happens here. This one, there's a chance to see some very legit shit pop on out of it. So that's exactly what we're going to get the chance to see today. So please, dearest Zerg players, please, oh my god, please start using Nidus Worms more. I did make a list because uh, I'm actually really sick right now, and it is my throat. Oh, I'm ugh, forcing my way through it. Um, but that's okay. Just a little forgetful. Just going to make sure I get everything uh, proper. Oh, of course, uh, for any of you who didn't know, Fun Day Monday actually does not happen without the admins who help me sort through hundreds of these replays every Sunday and Monday. Because um, a lot of interesting things happen when you get, you know, five to 1,500 um, submissions. For instance, people submit replays that have nothing to do with Fun Day Monday. Uh, people submit games that are like two hours long where the description of the game doesn't match the game at all. And the admins help us dig down to those little golden nuggets that are the games that we end up seeing. So big hearts to them. Big hearts to the admins. If you see anyone with an at name in the I in my IRC channel, that's definitely someone to kick ass. Uh, and also, uh, a little bit of shamelessness, uh or I guess shamefulness. I, I kind of want to win a Shorty Award. Yay! So go to shortyawards.com and go to gaming and you'll see Sean Day 9 plot this guy uh, right there. All you have to do is create a Twitter account. Um, I don't think it takes submissions from new Twitter accounts. So if you have an existing Twitter account, um, follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash day9tv, and then do a vote for me on shortyawards.com because if I win, I get a piece of glass that says winner. I fucking want that glass. Yeah! Bam! I love the blasting gun motions. And that's it. That's the exciting news for today. Now, I want to go into a little bit of the Fun Day Monday topic of the day, which is, of course, the Nidus Worm. I want everyone to think about how Zerg generally looks from uh, an observer's perspective, or even a player's perspective. So what you do is you start off, and you want to expand, and you kind of want to defend you want to make a lot of drones, right? And then you get your big, scary set of mid-game units like Roaches with Burrow, Mutalisks with whatever. They're Mutalisks, so uh, maybe some Infestors are in there too. And then you go right back to making drones. Okay, cool. Got to make some drones. Uh-oh, his army's getting bigger. Guess I have to make some more hatches. Maybe get some upgrades. And then you start making those mass units, right? Like the Zerglings, more Roaches as well. Even getting some power units like Hydras in there. And now you're maxed. And you're going... Uh-oh, I can't make any more units, and a Max Zerg army's kind of bad. I guess I'll just kind of keep defending and try to get Broodlords out. You know, this is kind of this defend, 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 and in this spot, I kind of want to defend a little bit more. And it sucks, right? It's very sad. Mm, Terran and Protoss get to attack, do all their fanciness, but Zerg kind of has to just uh, sit and hang out. Fun day Monday this week is to try to peel that open. God, I like noises. Let's take a look at exactly the sort of coolness that you can do. And what is particularly exciting, especially about the fact that the sound is now on. You know, I actually saw that beforehand, and I could have turned it on, but I know that for so many of you, it is very important when participating in the Day 9 drinking game to, uh, you know, if I just do this a little bit, I'm sure that there are some of you who are getting pretty upset at this point in time, because I believe we're just a smidge into the series, and there's already multiple enables. Bam. So, in exciting news, we have our Zerg player... Dracker, Draker, something like that against the enemy Skylar in the bottom left. We're going to go ahead and speed this game up. We got four replays to do today. And again, I have my little note sheet so I don't forget because my brain is leaky today. Got a little bit of an infection when coming back from Vegas. And not that kind of infection. I just have a cold and I got something in my throat. It's normal. It's normal. 
Anyways, anyways, so we have that good old drone production going down. Now, what we want to note in this game, the introductory game in Fun Day Monday always gives a good sense of the overall concept and the spirit of the Fun Day Monday. We see Skylar building his gateway right away. We see Draker uh, doing nothing right away. It looks like he would like to early expand. Yes, yes, there is his hatchery going down. Uh, oh, stealing a gas. Okay, okay, cool, stealing a gas. Now... For any of you who always just kind of do things, right, a lot of you just kind of steal gas because you're like, there's a gas geyser my drone could build on it, and that is your complete and total thought process. Take it one step more, give at least a reasoning like, why? Why would I do that? Easy, 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 easy. Immediately shuts down a whole bunch of tech opportunities. No blink stalkers, no dark templar rushes, very little void ray usage. Kind of restricts them down to some roboing, some gateway-ing. Yeah! So, uh, by the way, for any of you who don't know what it restricts, play Protoss against the computer and just build one gate, or excuse me, one assimilator, and you'll kind of see that you can't really do things anymore. And you'll go, aha, I now know the possibilities that occur for Protoss when I steal his gas. Bam, bam, bam. Feeling good, feeling great, feeling cocky. All right. In the meantime, the noble Draker throwing down a spawning pool, some zapping action from Skylar. Um, what we're going to begin seeing from the Zerg player is everything normal in the whole wide world. Looks like a zealot might be popping out soon. Uh, it appears that he is in fact just electing not to build a zealot and build a pylon so he doesn't get pylon blocked into about 10 million food. Always want to be careful that you're not building your pylons too early. There are the Zerglings picking off the probe. Uh, yep, Rochorn, pretty standard fare. Generally, you see a second queen come up, but you know what? If we look at the APMs of these players, these are not tip-top-of-the-line players. These are not your ultra-diamond-level pros, because again, this is Fun Day Monday, folks. We're not looking for the ultra-tip-top diamonds. And in fact, this is an amazing example of how just the act of getting a lot of nice worms can punch your opponent right in his teeth. All right, knocking him down, advancing right on forward. There is the Stalker zapping away at the Extractor. There is uh, more things coming out, and it uh, looks like the Extractor is now fallen. Notice that Skylar is extremely low on gas. He's going to be able to finish his three gates in just a moment. But, I mean, we're even seeing that, like, yeah, I'm building some Stalkers, not quite able to get enough gas. Obviously wouldn't be able to go blink or something like that. Draker playing very passively, electing to not even build drones, building some more spine crawlers that will defend all five of these stalkers. Expand going down. All right, cool. We're going to actually fast forward past this sloppiness phase. Woo! And in a, in a world of magic, avoiding the lack of drones being built, avoiding and in a world of magic, oh, it appears that players are getting some more drones. All right. Killing off the destructible rocks, expand going down. Now, for the record, this, again, is quite sloppy. This is not the ideal play. This is not super efficient. We can have this expansion up a little earlier. We can have a bigger army. We can have our roaches actually kill the free set of units right next to them. All this sort of good jazz. But you know what? Both these players are sort of equivalently behind, right? They're equivalently lagging in their usual style of play. Usually, the Zerg would have a lot more drones, and then a lot more roaches, and a lot more hydras. But he doesn't. He has some roaches, some hydras, some drones. Normally, the Protoss would have a really fast expansion, and a lot of gateway units, and super fast Colossus. But he has kind of an okay-ishly timed expansion, and not so many gateway units, and a little bit of a later Colossus. They're sort of equally falling behind our ideal norms. So, this means that we can still glean a lot of good juice from this game. Yeah, yes, yes, the good knowledge juice. Sucking from the teat of knowledge in this game. Remember, experimentation is the key. Doing crazy things you wouldn't ordinarily do. There's the Nidus Worm going down. Now, it does look like Zerg has a substantial little force. He could begin doing some poking action. He is not allowed to do as such because Protoss not only is attacking, but also because it's against the rules. You have to be doing a Nidus Worm in this daily. So make sure you begin watching your mini-map right around now. So Skylar is going to begin advancing. This is not the biggest army, right? This is a little bit small. It's also a little early where we have one Colossus instead of the usual uh, waiting to two, three, or four. But you know what? These sorts of timing pushes do happen even at a high level with one Colossus. So, oh no, look at the crisis, right? This is not going well at all for Zergi. He's getting his front wrecked. Oh, looks like he sees some roaches. It's time to go ahead and retreat. He could have killed the Colossus, but both players, they want to be fair to one another. 
Not going to pick off that Colossus. It's very generous of Draker to just give him that free Colossus back. Skylar opting to not mine gas in any regard ever, no matter what. No problem, especially considering that he is extremely low on gas and could benefit from it. No big deal. Just going to take it nice and easy. There's the creep tumors getting taken down. And at this point, I would probably say something like, ooh, not looking as great for Zerg. He was kind of forced to build only roaches. Didn't get the chance to build as many Hydralis because they got killed. And indeed, we see more units popping out for Skylar. All right, fantastic. Adding on more. Is he getting yet another Colossus? No, he is low on gas. Please make gas. But you know what? I want you to think about the way that this Colossus Stalker army operates. I want you to just think briefly. How does that operate? How does that army function? Well, it gathers itself up into a huge, tight-packed little ball... And then it just sort of pushes itself across the map and kills things in its path. It is especially the reason why Zerg players tend to consider... Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, oh, just getting all the germs out all during the cast. Maybe we'll get smear on the camera a little bit. But that's okay. We shall romp forward. Mm, ice water glorious. It moves all the way forward and just crushes everything in its path. So, this means that when Zerg is like max at 200, 200 food, he starts to think, Ugh, I still don't feel that confident because I don't know if I can face a large Colossus ball in a straight up fight. So, that's where Zerg starts doing all his crazy goofiness and all that stuff, you know, where he makes a million spine crawlers. But recall that in all of this, the Protoss army is all packed together. You ever seen five Colossi just chilling by themselves? Zergy players out there, think, if you saw just five Colossi, and you had your usual army, how would you feel about that? You'd be like, yeah, and just run up and snap their little necks, push them on over, ooh, they'd topple over like idiots, and then you'd get five free Colossi, no problem. Same thing with the Gateway Army, if you saw the Gateway Army by itself, you'd be like, yes, no Colossus support, crush it, easy peasy, no problem. So, in other words, what I'm arguing is that this whole army needs to stay together. It needs to stay together. So what happens when we get this Nidus Worm by Draker in the back? In particular, it doesn't do anything for a little while, and now it's finally popping out units. Fantastic. So it's going to begin darting forward. This is not a huge amount of units. It started to do a little bit of damage. We don't have a gigantic army here. Uh-oh, here's the army of uh, our good friend Skylar. Skylar is actually going to be able to kill it off. You see Draker not retreat in time. But that's okay. You know what? He did a little bit of damage. And notice all of a sudden, there's a whole army here. And the Colossi are sort of all the way back here. And this just looks really safe. I mean, if we just come over here to this uninteresting piece of terrain, look at the minimap. Zerg just looks safe. There's no dots at all nearby him. Very cool stuff. All right, great. So we do have this little spotter overlord here. Zerg's getting a little high on money. No big deal. Protoss uh, getting a little bit higher. Um, but, you know, one thing to note, Zerg is slightly ahead on food. That's pretty normal for most PVZs in general. Uh, the Zerg will climb farther ahead of the Protoss. So, you know what? Protoss comes and does his next big attack. Zerg's not feeling good. Uh, Zerg, ideally, ideally, in these sorts of situations, does like the Protoss to attack before the Zerg is maxed. So, it looks like Zerg, yeah, just did a whole bunch of huge damage. And, again... So Protoss is going to try to rebuild, he's making more Colossi, starting to create a bigger and bigger and bigger force. Now I will say, Protoss let his macro slip a little bit, so he's actually far behind on uh, just army size in general. But the army size isn't the important one. See here we have one Nidus Worm, two Nidus Worms popping out at the same time. Just watch the movement of the units on the minimap, this is so awesome. So here come some units, so all the units come down. And also we have some more units come this way. One of these expansions is guaranteed to die, right? This one, I mean, look, look down here. We see that all these units don't really quite know where they want to go. But here comes the target firing. And what can Zerg do at this point? Climb right back in and retreat. Zerg now doing damage over here. This is so easy and so cool. Why don't you guys do more of this? Hey, look, swarming right up here. This expansion seemed to be able to stay alive. So here comes the huge army coming back right here again. And look, just retreats. Just retreats. Oh, hey, look at that. Yeah, we're coming to get you, Barbara. I don't even know what that means, Draker, but you got it done, baby. Just running in here doing a little bit of damage. And again, no, you can retreat. You can just pull everything back right now. Zerg obviously is not going to because his army is vastly bigger. 
Well, he could pull everything back and have another Nidus Worm right here and just pick that off. And really, at no point in the game was Draker really directly engaging the Protoss army with the exception of right up here. And look at how easily he was able to just pick the Protoss apart. Yeah, totally freaking sweet, man. Totally kick ass. All right. Speeding things right along, because we have many O replay to do today. Blast them through. Yeah, retreating. See you later, Expo. Done. Skylar leaves with a frown on his face. The no GG day nine daily viewership up 1-0. and Mmm. So fantastico. Now, based upon my little note sheet, yes, that is the name of the replay I need to load next. Fantastic. Love taking notes. Yay. Going into the Monday folder. This is actually the 11th day nine daily. Um, it appears that I am looking for a 42-minute game. A 42-minute game? Yeah, there it is. 42-minute game. Game! That's always my favorite, is when my disease ends up messing with my voice. Like, Sean, how are you doing? I'm like, fine! <laughs> and I get that total overlord puberty noise. You know, that, Sean, how are you doing? And I'm like, bah! Bah! He appears to be sick. No problem. Ice water fixes everything. So game two, again, I'm always interested in the idea of taking a tactic, that tactic being Nidus Worming everywhere, and turning it into a strategy. How do we get the Nidus Worms? How does that flow and everything else we're doing? So let's take a look. So we're going to go ahead and speed through this game. Crux, who I think we have done a replay of him before. He's our Zerg player at the north, and we have too much gas. The player who needs a little bit of Beano spawning at the left position. There is the gateway now finishing. All the goody goodness of sorts of fast gases. Again, two in the gas. Why does everyone have two in the gas? And there's a green. That's no big deal. Looks like he is going to be expanding whenever he so desires. Now, let's start thinking of how a strategy that involves a lot of Nidus warming can be very effective on this map. Well, I'm thinking this island and this island, don't you? Yeah, that would be great. Most of the time, people take... Uh, those islands with the Nidus Worm, so that way they can go mass mutilisk or something along those lines. Um, but we're going to see something a little different come out of Crux. So always a good technique is to convince your opponent that it's important to kill his own building. So we're going to go ahead and see him do that. Fantastic. Always a good opening. Very strong. Alright. Robo Bay going down from too much gas. All right, come on, Crux. You got this, man. Gonna set up his usual early defense. There's the Roach Warren going down. There's the Evolution Chamber going down. I like this. A lot of people just rushed for the Nidus Worm. A lot of, like, one base Nidus. There's this great game where this guy uh, goes one base Nidus. He creep tumors all the way to his ramp, throws up a whole bunch of spine crawlers. Terran Army comes to the front. It ain't big, right? It's like six Marauders like 12 zergling or excuse me 12 marines something like that so he has tons of roaches and zerglings huge force and the spine crawlers could just kill it right what does zerg do he goes one base nidus worm and just nidus is the other guy's base and just sacks his main i don't know his choice this is his game i'm not going to tell him what to do but just kill the shit at your front door man he forced the game to be overly dramatic much like a seventh grade girl in her first relationship but that's okay. We're not one to judge. Going to go ahead and slip back into this game where, again, we're noting not rushing to the Nidus Swarm, thinking, how does this Nidus Swarm incorporate into my strategy in a reasoned fashion? Here comes the Spine Crawler defense. It looks like too much gas has too much indecision. He goes left, he goes right. He jukes it, as we like to say. And by we, I mean chill from TeamLiquid.net. Getting the expo up. Three gateways. Opened up four gateways. Killed one. Because, again, three gateways is a little bit more common. No reason to back transition by killing off all your own shit. That seems good. There is the Nidus network going down. Ooh, let's see what Crux ends up doing with this one. All right, he's seeming reasonably defended. He could, again, be spending a little bit more of his larva because he has a million dollars and a million larva. Here's the Nidus Worm coming down. Uh-oh, Protoss, are you starting to feel nervous? He hears the... <laughs> the Nidus Worm popping up, so he's at least aware of it. Expansion going down right now. It looks like Crux is, again, in a little bit of an awkward spot. Uh-oh, there is an immortal, dude. He is advancing forward. There's the Guardian Shield. Zerglings trying to advance. Drones trying to participate in the battle. They can't. One spine crawler left. Oh no, is Zerg gonna die? Oh, he's getting some more roaches. This queen's taking some serious hits, man. It looks like Protoss is advancing forward aggressively. Aggressively enough to complete forgetting macro. Very good. Drones in the fray. More stalkers coming out. It's fine. It's fine. No big deal. 
Standard, standard. Just lose everything you have, bring all your drones and shit to the front, and defend. I ain't dead yet. I don't see a GG. It's fine. Crux is gonna recoup. He's gonna push back and sacrifice all of his Zerglings. Good. Fantastic. He ain't dead yet. I don't see a GG. More roaches being produced. This expansion is now up for Crux. He's beginning to make a queen. A good transition for any base. Here comes Annie Mortal, dude. There are yet more mortals popping out. Good composition of units. Getting more gateways than you can sustain. Cool. This is always useful to have more gateways than you can produce out of. Because if you're awful and forget to macro, you can get your money back down to zero and feel pretty cool. Yes, it's all about feelings and dealing with them in that way. So cool, we have the excess over brutal macro. Uh, for the record, if you go warp prism, you are allowed to get this many gateways. Because you can warp in eight guys at a time. Mmm, eight guys at a time. So you know what? Doesn't look like Zerg has actually begun doing anything with his Nidus Swarm aggressively. He's just constantly building up. Now we see him getting some Hydralis, getting, ooh, a Hive. Nidus Network still out, continuing to mine some gas, even setting up geysers on these expansions. Because remember, you need gas to do almost anything with Zerg in mid-game. And here comes yet another push, no problem. Gonna bring all my drones, even got some Hydras on my high ground. Ooh, look at my macro Crux. Looking good, feeling good, seeming good. And the resource counting station. Oh, Crux ahead of his opponent. Feeling fantastic. He's going to pull back again. I don't see a GG. Crux don't see no GG. We're going to see that robotics facility go down. Upgrades, upgrades. Double robo. Ooh, yeah, you know what? Protoss did not want to transition into the big Colossus army right at the get-go. Instead, he was favoring doing those immortal pushing. So that way he could end up constructing some good aggression, maybe transition into that. All the usual fanciness. And Zerg has both the islands. Look at the roaring economy. Oh my god, the American economy in the 1920s, a.k.a. Crux, looking good. Let's hope that he can avoid Black Friday. Here comes more Black Friday, Black Tuesday, Black... There was some day of the week that was black where a lot of terrible stuff happened. I'm actually going to consult the chat on this one. Always a little bit embarrassing when I don't actually remember anything about history, but you know what? It's fine. It's fine. I just get black. For everyone saying a different day of the week. How did I not anticipate that? Every single day, they're like Sunday. They're like Tuesday. There's like Black Labor Day there. Look, something bad happened. And we don't want that to happen to Crux, too, all right? We don't want him buying stock on credit. That's all I'm trying to argue. Good. Fantastic. Anyways, returning back to the game. Whew, thank God I only know a lot about StarCraft. And good thing I'm not sitting here being like, you know what's really important about politics, guys? You need to know your colors. Red and blue are usually the two that are incorporated into most major political systems. Very similar to Halo. All right, cool. Crux now advancing forward. Going to be... Oh! Oh! You thought Thor drops were annoying? How about a Hydralis on your cliff, dog? There they're going. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And whenever you're in an awkward position with a lot of Hydralisks, retreat. You can always retreat when you're doing this sort of business. Crux is just cruxing. I was supposed to be crushing. Intended to be funny. Let's see if you think it's funny, too. All right, so cool. Here comes the huge push. Uh-oh, the Death Ball. The Doom Crusher army. Here comes Zerg, he has a lot of Hydralis, he has a lot- Oh, Crux! No, Crux! Crux, your defense! Crux, your defense, use your drones! Use your drones, don't worry about it, guy! Just get your drones, get your drones in there, man! Drones can always fight, they have claws, they're little crabs, they're always- They're always ready to- Yeah, they're gonna mine their minerals and get over and do a little punching. Yeah, take it, army. Bring the drones out, dude, why are you not- Come on, Crux, hang in there, man. But that's okay, Crux. I'm keeping in mind that you got the islands, baby. It's fine. There's the spire going up. More drones. Get them. Oh, my God, the drones mutinying. Wait, did, did my eyes deceive me? The drones attacking their own Hydralisk den. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Let's focus on the Hydralisk den. Let's focus on the drones. Kill it. Yeah, look at them. They're just like... Get, kill it, kill it. Don't jiff that. Don't make a jiff out of that. Don't want to see a jiff on that. No, don't do it, Reddit folks. Don't do it. I don't want to chip on it. Anyways, destruct Horzing all the way through. Quick, morph into a greater spire. Maybe you can get some up in time. Ugh. All right, okay, it's fine. He has this island. He's going to make 100% of everything there. He has these three overlords. A little bit of a dip. 180 to 52, while your uh, Protoss opponent's food did not really change in the slightest. I would call that... Um, 
not ideal. I would call that a perhaps not panning out as much as you would want it to. But don't forget, this is still Fun Day Monday. He still needs to build two Nidus Worms at the same time. So let's... Ooh, he's getting two Nidus Networks. Very good. Don't want to build one. Want to build two. So that way you can get a replay submission up. Fantastic. See the Stalkers moving around. Hmm. Yes, there's the Stargate going down. Because remember... In a strategy book somewhere, it says the counter to island bases is flying units. They're always thinking. The misters are always thinking. There they go, coming out right now. Oh man, fantastic. Definitely, definitely needs to improve this situation a little bit more. Okay, he's getting some Corruptors. Getting Corruptors. This huge army can't do anything, with the exception of getting Blink, in which case it would end this game literally immediately. But either way, we have a whole bunch of Corruptors flying around the map. Food count getting a little bit higher for Zerg. It looks like Protoss has finally cleared this piece off. Uh-oh, uh-oh! No, oh, is he going to be able to warp things in in time? There's the Corruptor. Gah! Gack him! Gack him! Get him! Gack him! Uh-oh, no! Your whole Zerg army can be in as many places as you want at once. And ho, oh, baby, baby! Look at that! Defense into offense! Crux, you show him. You show him who the boss is. Throw those little darts while your own Hydra's off. Come on, two at a time. Oh, shit! Get me out of here! Gonna go ahead and retreat? No big deal. That's fine. Corruptor's still on the loose. Can easily pick off some of those Colossi if they do get isolated. Yes! The double Nidus Worm! Write that down, ladies and gentlemen. We have successfully completed satisfaction of the Day 9 Daily Fun Day Monday 237 requirements. Killing your whole freaking base. And what happens when this army gets home? Just pop right back in and retreat. Look at how cool this is. I love this tactical manipulatory. It's a word. Trust me. And he's on the retreat. Get in, get in, get in. Yeah. Escaping with nothing to worry about. Zerg is actually creeping a little bit farther ahead. He does seem to have his layer up. No Spire, which means no Blue Lords. And it looks like Nidus Swarm's getting morphed right here. Do get taken out. He's just going to come to this backside. He's just going to double Nidus Swarm again. Ain't no problem at all. Too much gas. Trying to Beano this. Killing it. See you later. More units getting warped in. Ah, so close. Creep. Good little spread up here. Kind of want to consider expanding to this location a little bit more. But either way, we have a lot of Corruptors. There are more Nidus Swarms going down, sort of flying around. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Sacrificial Corruptors betray the location of the Nidus Swarms. Let's see if we'll be able to get anything out in time. Ah, not looking too good. That's okay, he's getting his hive up. His money is at a million. Getting some Spore Crawlers up as well. Continue to make the Corruptors. Because remember, Protoss is countering islands with freaking air units. He's making more pylons. Wants to get unpylon blocked. There are more Overlords sneaking down the the whatever side of the map. The east side of the map. The 3 o'clock half. Nothing wrong, I think, with just building a Nidus Worm right here, right? I don't... Uh, that wouldn't be bad, right? We'd, we'd prefer to just kind of walk our guys there. It's against the rules, though. Hey, yeah, look at this. Double Nidus Worm right on the front doors. And this is actually a pretty vulnerable... <gasps> a mothership. <sighs> He's getting a mothership. You saw it from Kiwi Kaki how much good that stuff can do. Here come the Sacrificial Roaches. Unable to really do much of anything, but here comes the rest of everything. Oh, the whole army... Oh! Gets recalled at the last second. Few things are awesomer than watching epic battles at times to speed because we freaking can. And there you go, Crux, baby. There you go. Breaking down the front door. Uh-oh. Here comes a bunch of stalkers from the backside. Unload. Oh, my God. There's so many units in there. Unload. Start unloading. Get them. Get it done. But somehow too much gas just got infinity units almost instantly. So it looks like we're doing a little bit of recouping and regrouping. Crux having the heart pounding. Yes! Nidus Worm again! Is this not awesome? Is this not so cool? Oh my god! Down to 52 food, pulling all the way back, killing stuff off. Retreat. Uh, no, no uh, attack. Uh, uh, re retreat. Retreat. Get him out of there. No, attack. Attack! Yeah! See you later, too much gas. Stomped on, crushed, rolled. See you later, too much gas. The viewership of the Day 9 Daily is far too powerful. Far too powerful. There's going See You Later Nexus. Any more units getting produced? Yes, indeed. They get Prodwee's aid oh so fast. Um, Alright, fantastic. And it looks like... Oh, Broodlord's going down! Are you getting a sense that there's a playstyle of Zerg you have not experienced yet? Are you getting the sense of that? Now, because I am polite, I have a little bit of a runny nose. Let's just admire this overlay for a moment. Isn't that a great overlay? <sighs> Isn't that wonderful? 
Isn't this a cool playstyle that we're seeing right now? It is completely unlike anything I've ever seen. <gasps> Manipulating the Protoss forces to our advantage. Fantastico. Fantastico. Look at this. Broodlords on your left. Nidus Worms also on your left. Advancing forward, I really think that with 4 uh, times 16 sets of units, I mean, yeah, that's like a lot of stuff there. Probably could have taken this out, but you know what? Oh, Broodlords up on the high ground. Void Race trying to do as much damage as possible, and, um... Sadly doing it, I kind of want those Broodlords to be really successful. But you're starting to note, uh-oh, Protoss might be able to make a little bit of a comeback. Pfft, no. Anyways, we do see that there is this Nidus Worm coming up. Oh, yes, not quite unloading everything. Nidus Worms have a very bad habit of just glitching and not doing anything. But Zerg Crux getting a little bit low on the minerals. Oh, man, and it looks like, oh, the Mothership has returned. I wish that were like a hero in Warcraft 3 where it would like keep its kill count and literally be the same person. Where it's like, thank God you morphed me back. Another double Nidus Worm. And here he comes. He's sneaking up. <gasps> oh, it's a little bit less than ideal, but that's okay. Counterattack. It's a counterattack. Drones coming into the fray. Again, don't forget that they can do their little Tyrannosaurus Rex arm bite. Not as many units from Crux, though. We do see that there's a whole freaking army up here on the high ground from the Mass Recall, but he is still trying to sprint forward with as many of his units as he can. More warping in. Oh, no! Look at your money count! Crux with the Trust Fund, with the Epic Trust Fund, going to begin the remining action, going to begin re-expanding, going to begin redoing a lot of things, because, as usual, back to 55 food again. Ugh. It's always kind of like, yeah, after my opening, I like to open up with another opening. I just lose everything, and I kind of get to do multiple instances of the same build within one game. Who says the third time won't be the charm after the 40-minute mark? There is that Nidus Worm continuing to poop out Udels and Udels of drones. Corruptors getting in position. Does he have a greater spire? You bet your ass he has a greater spire. Too much gas, getting low on minerals, but he does have the gold expo up. Speeding things right up. There's Mr. Zealot. Uh-oh, Mr. Zealot. Run! Run away! Run away! I hope he doesn't notice. Um, for the record, how many of you guys have ever had the I sure hope he didn't see that sort of uh, core to your strategy basis, if you know what I mean? Where you'll, you know, you'll be doing a drop with like a medevac and you'll fly right by an overlord and you'll be like... Let's just hope he didn't see that, and we'll just drop him anyway, you know? Or, like, your probe walks right right by his army. Like, he's on move, and your probe's going to expand. Your probe's just sort of like, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. And you're just kind of thinking, I'll put the expand down, and we're just going to do a little bit of this, right? That's a fundamental strategy. That's such a common technique, especially at tournaments, when you do, your brain decides to be a total fucking dumbass and your brain's like, yeah, sure, I'll do a strategy I've never prepared before. I'll totally cancel my Twilight Council and start going for ultra-fast three Stargate Void Ray. Overlord flies right over your base. Yeah, he didn't see me go three Stargate Void Ray. Absolutely not. Some, that's not something I've ever done before. I'm definitely 100% going for a Twilight Council. 100%. I would never, never lie to you. Uh-oh, uh-oh, getting whacked it. Go get them, roaches. Oh, a few things are awesomer than when you forget about units, and they come to your rescue, and it seems intentional. Fantastic. Too much gas. Has a lot of everything. Can Zerg end up recouping? There was a there was an explosion somewhere. Where was it? Yeah, right there. All right, cool. A lot of Zerglings being made. As we see Zerg fresh out of gas, trying to mine as much here as possible, making more Zerglingies. Here's the majority of the army. Well, there's the majority of the army right there, but where is the mothership? Is there even a mothership? Yes, there is! Oh no! The island expansion! Deflam! He lost. I don't want him to lose. Hmm. It's alright, you know what, Crux, you're a total baller, screw it, man, to you. Day 9 daily viewership, 1-1, one and one, but you know what, Crux couldn't handle the heat. Probably could have countered, killed off a whole bunch of bases, but that is okay. Just couldn't, couldn't quite do the final step. He just, he got to that point and said, two recalls in one game, I'll submit it. Day 9 can't say no, and I couldn't, you're just too tantalizing, Crux. Hmm, that is alright, you know what? Let's go ahead and watch some of the ZVT matchups in this. Let's go ahead and check some of that out. Going into Day 9 Daily 237, game number 3, multiplayer. Monday, the 11th one, and it is this one. We're going to do something unique this game. 
We're going to be doing it a little bit from the opponent's point of view. You've heard me talk about all this game theoretic. Oh, we're doing different changes in the metagame. Um, it's good we brought Kermit into that mix, right? All those good stuff. But let's see what it feels like to be a Terran here. Nothing wrong with that. Let's ch 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 check it out. All right. Christian Sandman. He is on the right and Armad. Armad. Armad, we're going to see how you do it. Yep, SCVs are ready. He's going to go ahead and throw SCV down a supply ready. depot. Fantastic. Good. Good. There is the barracks going down. SCV there is the ready. scout coming out. Good. It looks SCV like he really... Oh, two barracks play. Who do you think you are? Every single Korean Terran on the Korean server? Ah! But it looks like he is opening up with a two barracks. I don't know if any of you have ever played on the Korean servers, but uh, kind of before the six-minute mark, the player goes, maybe I can build a bunker here. Maybe cannons can... I could six-pool on this map. Korean server, right, everyone's... And, of course, they don't ever say anything like, we all cheese 100% of the time. They're like, oh, it's a very aggressive style. It's very aggressive. Stop bunker rushing me. Stop it. Even when I play Protoss. Because that's the worst, is if you random and roll Protoss, a lot of the Korean Terrans are like... Bunker rush, bunker rushing, right? <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Ugh, maddening. So anyways, our mad, you make me mad, you bring back those latent childhood memories, and by childhood, I mean like two weeks ago. Oh, the stress. Oh my god, the pain in my brain. Okay, cool. He has the SCV position outside the front. Mariners romping their way forwards. More Mariners getting constructed. Gas going down. Our mad, feeling confident. Advancing forward. Go, go, go. Advancing with... Oh, it's a bunker. No, it's a... Build a bunker here. Can I build a bunker there? No, maybe I can just build another bunker. Yes! Yes, I certainly can. Just keep building bunkers until you finish building a bunker. That is the way of people who build bunkers. And they're going to get completely surrounded. That's okay. If at first you don't succeed, keep building bunkers. He's going to load and unload, and he's going to cancel a bunker, but not before he strongly considers adding on more bunkers. His Marine's sort of sitting here. Um, looks like he's going to... Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, now here's the surround. You might want to build a bunker. Build a bunker, repair, the, no repair, no retreat, repair, oh, retreat, retreat. All right, cool. An organized attack where hundreds of decisions were thought about and many were made consecutively in conflicting motion. Cool. Pick one thing and do it next time, though. Yeah, our mad. Getting them done, our mad. Retreat, advance, retreat, advance. All right, retreat, retreat. Keep making them. All right, from the Terran's usual point of view, we have to get a factoir. It's important to get that anti. Build a bunker. Build a bunker. That's actually a little more reasonable. If you lose everything, definitely build a bunker. But you know what? We're a little bit concerned about mutilists. We definitely don't want to have any of that junk getting in our way. So what are we going to do? We're going to get a factory fast. We're going to... Uh, yeah, we're going to get an armory. Get a Thor. Get a Thor. All right, cool. Yes, command center. Getting morphed into an orbital command center. Uh, could be like some of these guys moving them over, but you know what? Again, it's fun to kind of be a little bit teasatory, you know, but really, I mean, if we look at this current APM, he's playing at about your average, a uh, slightly below diamond type player, right? Definitely getting all the good jazz out, not quite in an optimal order, but no problemo. It looks like we're going to be getting a Thor real fast here. You know, if we just look briefly, if we just briefly, briefly note, I'm just going to come up here. That layer is done. So the Thor timing, not so bad. As long as we end up building it. There we go. We built it. We're fine. Don't worry about it. It's cool. Double tech lab. We want to get our stim and our combat shield up. All right. Fantastic. Okay. All right. All right. We have to listen carefully. He wants to scout around. Doesn't want anything getting into his base. Here comes down a second factory. Keep thinking. <clears throat> Keep thinking about those possibilities. Ignore me. Ignore my diseasedness. <sighs> Ugh, oh, excuse me. Ignore it. Ignore me. I apologize for that. It's hard to talk for an hour straight with an incredibly runny nose. I'm doing my best. Please ignore me. Either way. Uh-oh, there's the scan. He sees the roaches. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I think I heard something. Add on. Complete. All right, it's probably nothing. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to believe in the shadows that I see in the dark. They're not little scary monsters. I will clutch my stuffed animal closer to me. This isn't real little stuffed animal. This isn't real, Manfred. I refuse to believe. There goes the stim. There goes the combat shield to upgrade these marauders, dude. And here is one Thor making absolutely certain that these three depots and this one refinery that isn't quite yet operational will be fully defended from air units. 
All right, cool, we're going to continue building. Notice that at this point in time, nothing too out of the ordinary, nothing too crazy. Oh, reactor starport for the Wadey Vax, getting another tech lab factory. Base that seems fun. Under attack. under attack? What the? What was under attack? Oh my god, it's a freaking night of the... Help! Christensen! Christensen! Oh yeah, you thought Thor drops were fun to deal with, Taren? Well, get, get poked, get poked. That's right, get him. Take him, get him with the spine crawlers, right? I don't know if any of you don't see that, but I think a hundred percent of people do, of course. He... Get him! Yeah! Headbutt that shit. Get him, Christian Sinman. So now Armad not feeling as comfortable as he ordinarily would be. Trying to rebuild a lot of Marauders, getting more Thors out. Good core mix of Thors and infantry. Pretty, pretty darn tough to deal with. Armad actually not even going to be able to really deal with this at this point in time. Doesn't quite have the vision as we see. He's not, uh, doesn't have enough scan. Does have enough scan, but is just electing not to do it. He's going to continue moving out. All right, cool. All right, there's the scan. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of things. Retreat, retreat. He's going to pull back. He's going to try to regroup. All right. He's going to begin mining, but there's the headbutts. There's the freaking headbutts going on. All right. His army in there. He has an air unit. He's going to scan anyways. Oh, never mind, our mad. You are doing great, my friend. Nice for him getting taken down. There is the Thor drop. Yes. Oh, so effective. Let's get another Thor up there. Yeah, little buddies. Doing a good old amount of damage, cleaning that up. More Marauders getting made, more Marines, more factories just sort of sitting chill. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Armad! Armad, do you see it? Armad, oh my god. Oh, and Armad tried to sneak an expansion and got spotted. Armad, Armad, Roach is coming out right now. Here he comes. All right, let's see if he can cope. There's a lot of units here, but there are still a lot of Marines and Marauders. He stims, he has the Thors coming up, and he just freaking retreats. That's so not fair. You can do that. I would be our mad at this point. <laughs> He's feeling quite our mad. But that's okay. He's staying in. He's going to make some more Thors. He's going to make more Marines and Marauders, dude. Uh oh. All right, cool. If you can get enough of those units out, he's just going to scan just to make sure he's not messing up. Not missing anything. All right, cool. Positioning himself a little bit better. Looks like we're getting, ooh, another tech lab, so we can get extreme numbers of marauders. He's getting some tanks out as well. All right, all right, all right, Armad, just stay focused, stay calm, dude. What the? Right behind me, all right, get yeah, attack, attack, there's the stim, and he retreats, he can do that? What, oh my god, Armad, stay focused, Armad, just defend with the SCVs a little longer, get the marines up there, lift that off, all right, that's fine, pull it back to reposition. Uh-oh, this base, oh my god, it's the Zerg, it's the Zerg, Armad. All right, looks like he's clearing it out, and it looks like he's finally fine again. These Thors are really helping him. He's still do Armad, Armad, what are you, what are you doing, Armad? Armad, 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 you're fine, Armad, your base is okay. Armad, Armad, you're having a total mental breakdown, dude. Armad, it's just, there's just a little bit of creep back there, man. He's abandoning everything. Okay, he's gonna reposition his army somewhere. All right, he's running, and there's a changeling on the island. Oh my God, Armad! All right, he's gonna load up. He's gonna. He's uh, okay. He's um. Maybe we can. I don't know. Oh no. Oh. I, Thor drop. Thor drop. Thor drop. Zergs hate Thor drops. Right. We're gonna go for it. Uh. -oh, okay. All right. Oh. Uh, uh, Armad. Armad, Armad. Okay. All right, just hide him. Just hide him, Armad. All right, run, Armad. Find a place. If you can land, you can start. Mule oh my God. Oh my. Oh God, Armad. Oh no. Oh Armad. Armad, it's fine. Just find a place, Armad. Okay, build the Thanks. circle of barracks, Armad. You're gonna be fine as long as if you just can hold out long enough, Armad. What is? Oh my God, Armad. I am so worried about Armad right now. He is trying to hold on. He is creating the final outpost, Starship Trooper style. He will hold this as the final ground. He's trying to radio in for additional support. He is going to try to make this the final confrontation. He, the night is being built on the high ground because hell, why not? And he's going to land. It looks like he's going to be doing some long distance mining. And he's maybe going to go for the goal. He's going to maybe land it. All right. All's buildings have successfully landed. And there's some... It, oh, Armad. Armad.
Armad needs a hug. He's Armad. Man. So that was a little bit of an interesting game. I was seeing the usual manipulation of positional whatever by the Zerg, and then Terran went, and flipped his desk, like, lift off everything. I don't care. I don't care. It's like when you're at that poker table, and the guy's like, I'm all in. I haven't looked at my cards. I don't care. I'm all in. I don't care. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Whatever. I don't care. You know, it's just like, pfft. standard, good old. I, this is what we call an incident of tilt. I suppose that nidus warming all over everywhere is a good way to induce tilt. Uh, in that general fashion. Um, but you know what? Despite a little bit of the humor that was incorporated in that game, especially when all the buildings began to do their march towards the heavens, um, note that you can really break someone's focus by doing that. That's the most extreme instance of it, but a lot of times you'll just get someone who kind of is just like, oh, all right, I give up. I'm just going to box all my units and try to kill them. And that is exactly where you want your opponent to be, to make a decision he doesn't want to make because of the fact that he is so mentally given up. And now it is time for the final game of today's Fun Day Monday, a game that takes place on Scrap Station between two players not nearly of the highest caliber of play, but clearly of the highest caliber of awesome. Let's go into the final game, the most recently viewed game. We're alt-queuing this. All right, returning back, going to my replays. Have I even turned myself on DND? Damn, I'm good. Oh, God, Fun Day Monday. Oh, God. Here it comes. We have Kieudo. Q Q Q Q Q Q Q Against Sular Panic. Sular Panic. These are some tough names to say. I think Sular Panic is a little bit easier than Q Do. Some guy in chat says, Day 9, in case you're wondering, it's pronounced Keudo, and just retype the name exactly as it was listed there. Oh, thanks so much, that guy. Oh, man, the real problem with text can't quite convey those pronunciations, unless you're one of those super linguists who's like, oh, all 3457, it has an A with a little double dot above it. That's how you pronounce it, Day 9. I don't know, too bad I'm illiterate and wouldn't be able to learn that pronunciation anyway, so cute. K K K K U K U D O gives the good luck, have fun, all that good jazz, and we are getting right into the final game. Finally, someone not Protoss. Omgtoss, Omgtoss, Zul, our panic, a kindred soul. It would seem. It's always great. Well, Zerg are pretty gross too. Dot dot dot. Um, really depressed face. Lol. That's always my favorite of some players to have no problem just chatting and being friendly because um, sometimes it does get a little tiring if someone you're like, hey, how are you doing? And he's just like, she keeps playing, totally mute. And you're like, is everything okay? I mean, just, what? Good luck, have fun. And he's just totally indignant. I'm cool. I'll be really cool, especially when you're at a tournament and you're just like seeing someone. You're like, hey, man, good luck, have a good game. And he's like, sits down like total serial killer. Just Sitting mad. These guys are awesome. Sular Panic and Kyundu. You guys are awesome. Oh, look, the moon. Great. Anyways, here's the command center getting ready to finish. There's the second barracks going down as well. We're not going to worry too much about the suboptimality of play that we shall see. There's the hatchery going down. I mean, if we look at the APM, we got like combined 75 APM. No big deal. We're not worried. We got a tech lab going down. Terran building SCVs when is so convenient for him. Getting some Marines. Uh, might even invest in an upgrade. Yeah, sure. Looks like we're getting some stims. Started running around with the uh, Zerglings. There's a Roach Horn going down. Good. There is an Evolution Chamber also going down. There's the Burrow not... Well, it was going down, but it is not quite going down anymore. Terran looks like he's building up a pretty intimidating Marine Marauder Force combined with a Thor. Yeah, love Thors early on. Such powerful, potent, beastly little units. Hmm. You know what? Kudo playing pretty pretty good, right? Pretty standardly. Getting themselves some upgrades, controlling the Zell Naga Watchtower. Uh, second Queen coming out as well. Looks like one for a little bit of a faster tech, but you know what? Always love it when I say to someone, build them Nidus Worms, and you know what they do. They build them eventually, but first they get themselves an economy up. But Sular Panic, uh-oh, he's going to try to break down the center rock. He's going straight for the jugular. He's going directly to his opponent's freaking base. There's the expand going down, even utilizing the fact that those SCVs can load up, because hell, why not? They can actually walk there about four times faster, but damn it, look how cool that is. Come on, get out, guys. Unload them. Come on. 
Oh, come on. That's... Just unload him. Oh, well, unload him. Unload him. But yeah. So, now we have Sular Panic. He's getting increasingly close to the second barrier. There's another... Oh, Nidus Network going down. There's the hatchery coming up. All right, cool. We're adding on a little bit more larva. Kyudo is getting yet more hydras, roaches, and zerglings. And as we can see, uh-oh, uh-oh, Nidus Worm. Okay, cool. Oh, he's expanding. Have you ever thought about taking this far away island with a fast Nidus Worm? Uh-oh, uh-oh, Terran hurt. Here's the... Ah, and retreats. All right, is there anything up there? What does he see? He doesn't see anything quite yet, but he has the fear in him. All right, time to retreat. Uh-oh, another one coming down, but you know what? Sular panic. Zong! Fun day Monday. Titter, titter. Oh, I love screwing up ladders. Titter, titter, titter. Uh, it's my favorite thing in the universe. So, of course, here it comes. Here it comes. We have, ooh, three Thors. Marines fully upgraded. Do we even have the concussive shell? It doesn't look like quite yet. Is he getting it? Nah, but you know what? Not absolutely essential. Even getting some Wedivax has a bunker there. That's actually kind of cool bunker placement. Here comes the stim. Everything getting killed off. All right. Kyoto needs to, um, oh, uh-oh. Kyoto needs to retreat. Retreat, Kyoto. Retreat. Oh my god, Kyoto. I also even has this island and that one and this one, but only a half done hatchery. And now he's getting advanced towards at the hatch. Oh god. And look at all those hydros about to pop out. And there they finally arrive. Sular Panic does have a ton of units there. Going to be able to pick them off somewhat effectively, getting blasted down. More Zerglings and Hydras. All right, so Kyudo's going to be absolutely fine. He's going to just surround all this stuff, and and then the Thors are going to kill everything with relative ease. Thors are pretty good. So it looks like he's just um, going to pull out. I mean, there was an expansion there. He could have just, you know, killed the expansion. But that's fine. That's fine. He's pulling back. He's just going to go ahead and... Uh, 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 get back home. Get back. Get back. Meantime, Expo for Kyudo in the midst of all that crisis, still having enough focus to build drones at the expansion. Kyudo has double Nidus network because, again, need to be building those at the same time. In the midst, we do see in the base more Medivax, Thors, Barracks getting thrown down. Yes, Marauders and Marines, Kyudo. Oh my god, Kyudo. I don't know. I don't know how it is. Either way, that guy is starting to add more drones on in. He's getting Baneling Nest. He's getting Hydras. Another engineering bay going down for Sula our panic. He's realizing the more aggressive he needs to be, the more defense back home will be required. There are more mariners popping out. Oh yeah, taking this island. This is actually quite creative play. I mean, imagine taking these three island expansions really fast at like super high levels and then trying to defend along this area. Might not be a bad way to play actually. Terran's probably going to have a little bit of trouble hitting you because you're so freaking spread out. Yay! I'm a Zerg and I don't have to do nothing but defend anymore. Night of Swarms. Night of Swarms. Night of Swarms. Yes, yes. Do it. Do it. Do it. All right. So, yes. Good. Good. We're getting the plus two attack upgrade. There's the hatch halfway done. There's another hatch a little less than halfway done. There's a hatch 100% done mining. And here comes two Vikings. Here they come. Quick, send the defenses. Send roaches. That'll really show them who the boss is. Cool. Hydralis, though, popping out as well. Overseer getting taken out. Will he do any last minute -ness? No, we will actually get taken out. And again, these players, not the tip-top caliber of play, but this is some very interesting play by both players. Very stealable, mimicable at really any level. Ooh, good uh, placement there by Thular Panic because of the fact that, you know what? Really, you can end up uh, night swarming anywhere. And this is one of the most vulnerable locations in the universe. So, of course, going to defend the most vulnerable location in the universe. Gold not taken. Well, that's a little bit unusual. All right, he's scouting all over the place. Trying to find some place to break in. And, oh, does he see it? Oh, yes, he knows that there's something there, man. He scanned that long ago. See you later, Expo. But here comes the one Nidus Worm. Will he get a second one up? Yes, you have now qualified for the Day 9 Daily Funding Monday. Got to be building two Nidus Worms at once at at least one point. How cool is that? Expand a ton. Sack an Expo. Oh, goodbye, main base. How are you going to get back in time? Thor's. Thor's go. And even the little stupid Vikings trying to, like, trot along, you know. <laughs> I always thought of, um, anytime I saw a Viking wander around, I thought of a horse that kind of like had the middle third cut out and then squished together, and they said to the horse, can't walk on your front legs. And he went, okay, 
you know, kind of had these dumb, sort of useless legs on his weirdly short body. Didn't that, isn't that exactly what that looks like? Uh, 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 even the way it sort of trots around. I just want to implant that image in your mind so that way you will never have fun making Vikings ever again. But either way, looks like Sular Panic. Gonna have that Thor do a little blast in action. And then, uh-oh, uh-oh, Kudo. Okay, just pull your stuff back. Pull your whole army back, Kudo. You have such a huge army, Kudo. It's so big! Sular Panic, come on, Kudo. Come on, dude. Oh, dude, man, dude. By the way, that's probably a horrible feeling whenever you're like, all right, time to sneak and do an expansion. Uh-oh, go to the left, go to the left. And there's this little poor satellite trying to find anything he can. And at the same time, uh-oh, Viking's going to the top base, landing. Better pick off that Nidus Worm fast. Better pick off the Nidus Worm, because Zerg could load into it. But for some reason, he's choosing not to. Oh, my gosh, he's going after this Expo. Oh, my God, is that the only building left that he has? No, he does have this one. So if he kills that off... <gasps> Wait a minute, instant replay, B B B B B B B B B. What do we have here? All right, Zerg is okay. Zerg sees it. He sees it. He sees it. He sees it. He's it's there. You see it. Uh, uh, uh. Again, a lot of solid StarCraft play can revolve around. Sure hope he didn't see that. Because sometimes that'll happen. Sometimes your last freaking little orbital command is sort of like... <sighs> right, it can't do anything. It's trying to get away. But maybe he won't see it. Oh, all right. Returning back. Come on, throat. Hold out on me, baby. Come on, throat. So it looks like Sular Panic's smaller army. All right, now finally, Q Q Q do Finally, the Zerg guy. He's pulling back. Oh, Zerg lost his Nidus Worm. He's losing his island. That's fine. He can kill all this stuff out. And um, he's going to be able to... Yeah. All right, cool. So Sular Panic trying to get in good position. He's got to be careful, though. This is just so many units, and now he's running up. And it's going to be... All right, all the infantry falls. Not even useful anymore. It's just the Thors and... Thors are really good. Wow. Hmm. And, ooh, ooh, 32 kills, 28 kills, 45 kills, and an expansion. All right. <laughs> and in the midst of everything advancing down the front, look at the hydralis tails that will be cooked at the nearest gourmet restaurant. Queen coming in, drones so like, oh, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Woo, that was close. Frank! Frank! Oh, Frank the drone blasted in half by the double Gatlin cannon of that Thor. Expo getting taken out. Retreat, retreat. All right, we have one running base down here. We have a pool. It's cool. We can make Zerglings. Um, it would have been pretty useful to have all of your army at the fight. Uh, uh, Miss Piggy. Uh. But that's okay. The offensive drones. Gonna advance down to the bottom left location. Get those mules. Get them. Get them. Get them. Get them. Clip them. Get them. Gonna be able to take them out. Taking them out. There he is. He's now nibbling at the orbital command. There's now the Vikings advancing forward towards the overseer. Unload. Your army. Your army. Your army. Oh, and he lifts it. Maybe he didn't see it. Now we see the Thors advancing farther forward. And here they come out. Oh, the Vikings. Oh, Sular panic. All right, Kudu, I really think that this army could give these medevacs a run for their money. But oh my god, oh my god, they need to load back up. All right, so now Zerg is re-expanding to Terran's main to make sure he gets this, like, 420 minerals. Good, good. But the Thor drop, the infamous Thor drop, 39 kills, 55 kills, 40 kills. Oh, baby, that dies fast. See you later. Drone's getting blasted. Help, help. Help, Frank, we don't want to end up like you, quick! Hide! Hide! Oh, God! Oh, it's so terrible! Oh, God, the drones! Attack! Attack! Oh, God, we did four damage! Alright, alright. Looks like Hudo gonna try to work his way in. Alright, he's gonna try to retreat. Alright, okay, he sees it! He sees it, he's- Run! 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 Oh! 
Oh, run! Run! This is my orbital command impersonation. You see it? Oh! Oh! All right. He needs to try to get away. It does look like... All right, cool. There he is. He's going to get in there. He's going to be able to pick off that orbital command. But here's the last remaining structure here. Zerg has some base up here, but you know what? No Nidus Worm connecting it. If one Thor gets up there, it's all trouble. But at the same time, he's got to be careful. There are a lot of Hydralis out on the field. He's retreating. He's pulling back. Sular panic. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Quad. All right, Kudo taking the creep route back. Very smart. He sees it. He sees that this is the last building. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Unload, unload. Unload. All right, be careful. Don't leave it. Don't abandon it. Don't abandon it. Don't pull a Uniden on me. Don't pull a Uniden, Sular Panic. Come on, dude. Come on, defend your structure. There's Hydralis there. They'll be able to pick off your Metavax. Okay, he's going to unload. He's picking it off. Kyudo has 36 food. We see Sular Panic at 24, but these Thors, 50 kills, 55 kills. Yeah, that's right. Don't fight them, Broodlings. Don't fly away. Don't... No, that's your last structure, Sular Panic. All right, he's going to unload. No! Good! He got killed off. Fight! 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 Kill it! Kill it! No, don't! You can kill it! You can! Thor's never die! Don't say GG yet! You can kill it all! Well, that wraps up today's fun day Monday. I'm a little surprised Sular Panic didn't win the shit out of that game. Could have gone either way. Again, not the highest calibers of play, but an awesome caliber of play nonetheless. Oh, I hope you enjoyed the United Swarm Fun Day Monday. For next week's Fun Day Monday, I have a somewhat devious little selection for you guys to do. You should submit a replay to Monday at Day 9 TV of the following. Very similar to the Nidus Worm play, I would like you Protoss users, you are not allowed to attack with any units that were that were warped in off pylons. You can only attack with units that were warped in off warp prisms. Until you get three bases. If you have three or more bases up and running, then you can attack in a very normal fashion. But before that point, you are not allowed to attack with any units that were warped in from pylons. You can only do it off warp prisms. I want to see some crazy counterattacking and all sorts of fun droppiness going on. Also, if you load up Immortals into a warp prism and drop them, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, again, if you'd be so kind as to help vote for me in the Shorty Awards, go to shortyawards.com, go to gaming, vote for me. I want to win an award in gaming because they give you this cool glass thing and I would like the thing. Yay! So thank you, dearest viewership. I will see you tomorrow for more fun stuff with uh, not Newbie Tuesday tomorrow, but we're going to be announcing Newbie Tuesday. And of course, for any of you who did not see Day 9 Daily 235, watch that because it directly relates to Newbie Tuesday. Bye, guys. Happy Monday. Best day of the week.